thanks for joining us again on another interview now what i'm going to be doing is i'm interviewing preppers from all around the globe getting their take on what's going on see if there's any similarities or what we're seeing here in the uk because yes things are changing and they're freaking changing fast too so without further ado we're going to bring in our guest his name is rudy and he is alaska prepper and here he is hey brother hey, how's, how's it going? going good how are you all doing good? man good to see you yeah yeah last, yeah all last good. time we talked or last time we chatted uh you weren't doing very well you were a little bit ill i guess but uh, yeah yeah good now all good in the hood now mate all good all good so awesome. how has it been in alaska then um what have you well, been seeing and hearing over there dude we are getting ready for winter here in alaska it's getting kind of chilly you know, I, I, I actually <laughs> had to turn the heater on. I had to turn the heater on here a few days back. Uh, but yeah, yeah, yeah getting cool. ready for winter time, and uh, it's just uh, a matter of you know getting through the next seven months of winter. <laughs> but um, that's harsh, dude. Yeah, but but right. winter time is actually a time in Alaska. At least the way I see it, is a time to relax because you spend all of the non-winter months getting yeah. ready for winter, and then during the winter time, you know, you actually have a little more time to do stuff that you like to do because you're not yeah. getting ready for winter you're in the middle of it but uh but yeah this is the time of the year that i'm really <clears throat> grateful that i took the time you know ahead of this to prepare and get ready and it makes it a much more smoother ride throughout the the coldest yeah. and darkest months yeah i mean a prepper preps right i mean we're talking absolutely um you know dark weather all of the time and we're talking crock pot we're talking uh, wood burners and family yep. time and you can't enjoy that to the max until you plan and prepare through the summer month. So that's here we right. are, just on the foot of the winter, and uh, glad you're doing well, sir. That's awesome. So what I wanted to do is I've got a few things to ask because these are things which are happening here in the UK, and I'm not sure if they're happening in America, hence doing these videos because I want my subscribers and probably yours as well to sort of know what's going on in our countries now. Obviously, you're way over there in Alaska. You're nine hours behind us here in the UK. Um, have you noticed any sort of um, shops that um, are not taking cash? They're doing card only. Are you noticing any of that at all, or is it pretty much standard? You stuff? know, I haven't really run into that too much here or at all. I'm trying to think if there's anyone. But then again, you know, I'm not the kind of person that's always out in town and stuff. I'm a kind of a homebody, but I haven't yeah. heard of that. What I have been seeing very much of is the getting rid of like cashiers and going to self checkout. Uh, I've been yeah, seeing yeah. that a lot. And I think that that's kind of like the first step as to getting rid of cash because it's different in different countries because different countries have different ideologies within the people and, and, and different ways, different cultures. So it's a little different in different countries. But here mm -hmm. I think that the big push that they have uh, as to going to like cashierless self checkouts is that once they have the population conditioned to check themselves out, then they will slowly start saying, well, these machine only take credit cards and you only have maybe two machines that will take cash. And then eventually none of them will take cash in order yeah. to condition the people slowly into getting rid of cash and into thinking that cash is more of a nuisance than what it really is. So that's yeah, how I yeah. see it working out if we continue to go down the road that we're going. Uh, eventually, yeah. they don't have a choice. They have to get rid of cash. If they don't get rid of cash, their plan doesn't work because they oh, have I to agree. get rid of cash. Yeah, they have yeah, to get yeah. rid of cash so that you can be stuck with a CBDC that can uh, be programmed to allow you to buy and uh, participate yeah. in the economy in the way that they want you to participate in the economy. It does. It comes in with a lot of conditions, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. I've already been seeing here in the UK, we've got like, um, I think it's called Amazon Fresh. And it's just like um, a big like grocery store. And yeah. You go in there and the only way you're allowed in is if you if you download their app, you get a QR code set with your Amazon account and you just tap that. The little plastic door opens, you go in, there's yeah. no people in there. No. You know, I'm sitting, they've got that in London over here, have been for two years now. It's and gonna we're seeing more and more of that sort of thing. So what you're saying, you're seeing over there, although, you know, you still got shops that are taking cash, no no problem at all. This is sounds like a different tactic that they're bringing this in slowly by the sound of it, yeah? Yeah, and so, I've talked about this in the past, that this is what I see happening again, should we continue to go down the same road we're going? Because at any time, 
the people, we the people as a majority can wake up and say, hey, wait a minute, we have the power. You know, for example, here in the United States of America, we have 535 representatives that serve the Congress and the Senate, and then two that serve in the executive branch, i.e. the president and vice president. And those 537 folks pretty much <laughs> run our country, right? And we the people think that they have the power, when in reality, we have the power. So if yeah. we don't wake up as a population and realize that, hey, we have the power, we don't have to put up with this, then we will be headed down that road. And I've talked about it in the past that one day I see a supermarket, for example, having absolutely no workers in it. Like you said, you go in the door, you grab a shopping cart, you go do your shopping. And when you walk out the door, your, your debit card or your bank account gets debited for the exact amount of the food that you have in your shopping cart. And who's going to be there to police the area? It's going to be a robot that's running off of AI. So yeah. is there, there's not even going to be a human there to police mm -hmm. anyone that may want to steal. It'll be a robot that has no human emotions and that is programmed to make sure that you don't leave that store without paying. Yeah, you can see it coming. And yeah. going inside with that, <clears throat> you know, we I was just thinking, and as you were saying, you know, you've got a big empty store. There's no personnel in there. It's all AI. It's all computers, blah, blah, blah. Obviously, there is a potential for crime, like shoplifting, because people are going to hurdle all those barriers, grab what they want, and get out of there because there's no one to stop them. So the next question going on to that, um, have you seen crime um, getting more in Alaska? And also, have you seen police numbers dwindling? Are you hearing stories of police handing their notice in and they're struggling to recruit? Wow. Are you seeing anything like that at all? In Alaska, or I have to say where I live. I can't speak for all of Alaska. I live in uh, the population of the borough in which I live. is roughly 90,000 people, but it is very expensive. It's, it's a big borough, right? Yeah. Uh, so here I haven't heard anything about police officers quitting or anything like that. We have a pretty good community as far as you know. I'm concerned in the area in which we live. And to tell That's you the good. truth, I, I believe that the police officers or law enforcement here in, the, in this uh, borough and the community have a good relationship. Uh, I've That's never cool. heard of anyone having a bad experience with a law enforcement officer that did not deserve it. There has been some law enforcement <laughs> officer, you yeah. know, shootings where it's someone good cops, bad cops, right? But, but but that's because the other person was in the wrong and they drew their you know firearm first and started doing bad stuff. So I haven't heard of anything bad like that. I have a lot of respect for the law enforcement officers here that work yeah. near here. I've never heard anything yeah. bad. Uh, actually, I've heard good things. They've actually helped my wife uh, last winter when she got stuck. So I don't see anything anything like that, a bad law enforcement here. But I, I have talked to some of the um, like managers that work at like Lowe's, which is a uh, lumber store, yeah, and uh, and other like supermarkets like Walmart and stuff. And they tell me that, hey, our theft is up, that there's a lot more theft now than there was before yeah. this health crisis you know, before yeah. the last couple, three years. Uh, and yeah. I, I was kind of flabbergasted because, you know, I'm not really used to hearing about that here in mm. Fairbanks. Uh, like I said, it's a tight knit community as far mm -hmm. as I'm concerned. Uh, and they mm -hmm. were because I've seen a lot of things getting locked up, you know, and I'm like, why is this locked up? This is only like a $10 item. They're like, well, people walk out of it. You know, they walk yeah. out of here with it in their pockets and stuff. I'm like, wow. I didn't know that it was that big of a problem here, but I guess it is. And it seems to yeah. be getting worse. And what I recommend to people <clears throat> during this time is, is that during any downturn in the economy, violence goes up, theft goes up, crime goes yeah. up. So you just have to make sure that you, like we say in the military here in the U.S., keep your head on a swivel. Meaning yeah. that make, make sure that you understand and you can see your surroundings. And uh, yeah. you and I were talking earlier before we started this this conversation here about a video that I put out. I think it was yesterday where I talked where I thought I was going to get carjacked. Yeah, because yeah. It was like the perfect scenario. I, I stopped in the middle of the road because there was a lady stopped there and she started talking like kind of nonsense, really nonsensical, meaning that she wasn't making sense of what she was talking about. It didn't fit and the I, scenario, did it? Yeah. And then she started walking yeah. towards me at a fast rate. And I'm like, whoa, wait a minute. Am I getting carjacked? And as soon as I got in my vehicle, uh, once I thought that maybe someone was doing something nefarious, 
uh, she got in her vehicle and sped off. So I was like, huh. Oh. So from now on, it's going to have to be in the in the forefront of your mind. Whenever you go yeah. somewhere, always think safety. If you're going to travel and you can travel in groups of two or more, travel in groups of two or more. That way you can yeah. have that safety because, uh, you know, at any time you can just lose thought, you know, lose the thought of safety of what you, what's around you. And that's when it happens. That's when somebody yeah. takes, you know, takes yeah, your yeah. car or your money or whatever. Yeah, we call that situational awareness. I think they there do that go. in the States too. Exactly what and, it is. And I've been saying it for years because you just need to sort of put yourself in the mindset that um you mentioned it too, you know, not everyone is a good guy out there. There's gonna be really serious, yep. dodgy people out there, and you just need to try and think that everyone is a little bit risky. You don't know what they're gonna do. So, you know, make sure when you're in your vehicle, you lock the car, basic things, you know. So yeah, people do really need to sort of, even in Fairbanks, I mean, you know, 90,000 yeah. people, that's like, um, that's quite small in a big area too. So yeah. even there, it's starting to happen. And when Let you me, said about uh, shoplifting if you, too. If you don't mind me giving, giving a, you know, the audience a hint, this is something mm -hmm. that I've heard of done in the past. And it's so easy and simple to do that people just don't think about it. But let's say, for example, that you go to a theater, you know, a movie theater, or a restaurant or something like that. Uh, usually, do you have registrations for your vehicles where you live? Yeah, yeah. Well, here in the U.S., most people, I can't say everyone, but we mostly keep our registrations like in the glove compartment of our vehicle, right? So let's say I'm at a movie with the family. All someone has to do is break into my car, take the registration. They have my address, and they know that with a pretty good amount of probability that there's no one at my house because we're at the movie theater. So now oh, they have yeah. the next hour or two to go to that address, ransack your home, and by the time you get home, you'll notice what happened. So yeah. doing things like that, like it's instead it. of keeping mm -hmm. your registration in the same place that you always keep it, maybe change it, put it somewhere else. That way, mm -hmm. if that would happen, you know, you don't have to be the victim of your house being burglarized and worst case scenario, someone being there when you get home you know, knowing that you're yeah, coming yeah. home, and, you know, so yeah. So those are things that you want to think about. Again, like yeah. you said, situational awareness. Yeah, for sure. It's common sense. I mean, um, for most preppers anyway, but we, I mean, you know yourself, we're getting new preppers into our communities every single day now. And lots of people just don't know this stuff because, you know, they're not yeah. taught at school. They're not taught in a place of work. Uh, the bottom line is it's just common sense. Just be aware of your surroundings. I mean, I've even said, if you're walking down the high street, and you can look out the corner of your eyes, see reflections of windows, see if people was following you. You yeah. just need to be aware, you know. So going on to um, crime and all that sort of thing, have you noticed any supply chain issues? Is, is there any shortages of certain um, foods, um, you know, fixings and fixtures and that sort of thing? Or has it generally been okay yeah. recently? The thing is, is something that people get confused be between uh, between prices and shortages is that the reason that prices go up is because there are shortages you know because it's yeah. supply and demand so so yeah. there's two things and now this is my opinion of course because i am not an educated economist kind of like more like common sense there's two things really that affect the price of the things that you pay for be it food or be it lumber or whatever it is number one is the same thing that governments have been getting away with for decades, if not more than a century now, at least here in the U.S., and that's inflation. Yes, that's uh, the degradation of the money supply, mm -hmm. all right, by inflating it. There you go. <laughs> by inflating the money supply, therefore making it worth less for you, making it yeah. purchase less for you. That's one way of, of uh, inflation and prices going up. Another way is supply and demand. Uh, so if there's more of a supply than the demand, the prices are going to be low. If there's more of a demand than what the supply is, the prices are going to be high. Yeah. So even though right here, at least where I'm at, I can pretty much get whatever I need as far as things that I need, that things that we need to live, right? We can get them right here. But the prices, brother, the prices are just out of control. Oh, no. I Crazy. mean, I, I go into... I go into like a wall once in a while. I'll go into a Walmart, not very often, but I'll go into other shops like a Safeway or a Fred Meyer, which are supermarkets here in the U.S. And I'll look at the prices and I ask myself, how in the world is the average person who's making forty thousand dollars a year? 
how are they surviving when mm. they have to pay these food prices? Uh, yeah. After the inflation that was produced by the United States Federal Reserve, i.e. the U.S. government, uh, the average family in the U.S. is now spending about $7,000 <clears> excuse me, a year more than they were just two or three years ago on the exact same stuff. That's crazy. So the, the average American makes around, you know, the average wage in the U.S. is roughly between forty and fifty thousand dollars. Now imagine taking a seven thousand dollar hit on a fifty dollars, uh, fifty thousand dollar salary. That's incredible, you know. Yeah. And um, I just don't know how some people are surviving. I I predict that we are going to see crime be getting worse and worse and worse, yeah, and uh, we are going to see more homelessness getting worse and worse because yeah. i don't see how a person can survive making twenty dollars an hour you know let alone the fifteen dollars an hour that they used to cry about and scream about three four years ago you remember that when they were when they were like we went right. 15 we were well, where's where the, where are those uh protests now asking for fifteen dollars an hour because that fifteen dollars an hour is nothing. Now the latest article I seen was they want twenty five dollars an hour now, and what yeah. what they don't understand is is that it doesn't matter how much you get paid. What matters is how much what you get paid buys you. Exactly. Because whereas fifteen dollars an hour three years ago was considered a living wage, it's no longer considered a living wage. Why is that? Because those dollars buy you a lot less than what they used to. So people yeah. don't look at the real problem. All they do is look at the symptoms of what the real yeah. problem is producing. That's very true. I know. And pretty much the same sort of thing is going on over here. I mean, everything is getting so damn expensive. Yeah. It's just out of control. And when you look, go back to what happened in 2020, um, obviously, lots of countries borrowed lots of money from central banks to do mm. all sorts of things for our safety. And of course, all of that money had to be paid back to the central bank with interest. So the only way that they can get this money to pay that back is to raise taxes and that impacts yeah. food, fuel, everything else. But everything. the way are playing the same roughly. So it's really difficult. And we are seeing lots of homeless people in major cities here in the UK already. I mean, really? We've seen reports about LA and how bad it is there. It's insane, isn't it? Unbelievable what's going oh on. Oh, my goodness. Los Angeles, pretty much California. Can't speak yeah. for all of it, but the major cities, as far as I'm concerned, they're like lost. They look like third world countries, but only worse. Yeah. And it's happening more and more and more. I mean, New York is lost. Just, just wow. the, the illegal immigration oh, nice. that's going on in New York, they're lost. Even, even the New York City mayor was on mm. TV pretty much begging for the federal government. We need your help. You got to stop sending these illegal immigrants here because they're overtaking New York and we don't have the funding to take care of them, nor do they have the space. They were actually... Yeah. Now, now, I remember reading this. I'm not sure 100% on the validity, but I believe it. I believe it that they were actually kicking like homeless veterans out of hotels to put other people that came in here illegally. We had the same and here, dude. Incredible. Whoa. You had the same thing there? Yeah, 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 yeah. Amazing. Is, I'm glad that we found the link because, like I said at the start of this video, I, I want to get um, the views of real preppers from around the world, what they're seeing. And what you just said there, we're having the same thing. We're getting, we're getting way over a million um, illegal aliens into the UK over the last couple of years. And the population of the UK is... 70 70 million something like that so it's yeah. a big chunk of people yeah, over is, big and they're just taking over stuff what they were doing they was um, um putting them into hotels so what that done was anyone in the uk wanted to go to a hotel for a holiday they couldn't find a hotel because they're fully booked blocked booked for i think it was two years and wow. the owners of the hotels literally just got big chunks of money from the government to allow this to happen the hotels started getting filled up pretty rapidly and do you know where they started putting them then on old ministry of defense uh, military um camps really? in barracks military like barracks they're putting them well, all in there well you know what crazy. darren well the thing is darren is is that and some people gawk at this when i say this this has all been planned okay this has yeah. all been planned all right it's called the uh cloward and piven strategy 
Mm -hmm. If you haven't heard about the Cloward and Piven strategy, that's what has been going on, at least here in the United States, for decades. It takes a very long time to implement this strategy, which is where a capitalist economy uh, turns communist because so much pressure is put on all of the systems that it implodes, and then the people demand that the government take care of them. Uh, yeah. It's the Cloward and Piven strategy. We are imploding from within. And I do believe that the powers that be, that believe that they control the world, that they want the Western nations to be the new third world countries, whereas yeah, yeah. the third world countries will therefore become the new first world nations, just yeah, like the BRICS is happening. The, yeah, the yeah, BRICS yeah. nations will become the first world nations, whereas we, the Western nations, are supposed to come the third world countries. And, yeah. and unfortunately, we may see this, you know, um, uh, manifest into reality within our lifetimes. I hope not. I hope I'm 100 percent wrong. But that's yeah. what I see coming. Yeah. Well, um, there it is, guys. We pretty much run out of time here on YouTube because the stuff that Rudy and I are now about to talk about cannot be shared on YouTube. We will just be in so much trouble. So the only thing. Um, you can do to watch the rest of it. If you click the link below, it will take you straight through to the full length interview because we just can't talk about this stuff in there. It is what it is. So I'd like to thank Rudy for coming onto the YouTube channel and Thanks sharing this interview with me. Don't forget, if you want to see more of this, there's a link below. You guys take care. Thanks for watching. Stay funky. <laughs>